Cal OES logo, Inside Look, OESnews.com. Hi, I'm Brian May with Cal OES, and we are in Ventura Harbor today, and while the setting is beautiful, it's time to talk tsunamis. Do you know the one thing you should never do if a tsunami was headed toward the coast of California? We'll answer that in a moment, but first, the last week in March is designated as Tsunami Awareness Week. With more on that and how you can prepare yourself, here's Rob Mayberry. You know, Brian, California enjoys over 1,200 miles of pristine beaches, just like the one behind me here in Ventura. And while most Californians understand the potential damage that can be caused by wildfires, earthquakes, and flooding, far fewer know the potential risk from tsunamis. For instance, did you know California's two worst tsunamis of the past century happened in the month of March? The tsunami of 1964 killed 11 people and destroyed most of the town of Crescent City in Northern California. Although not nearly as destructive, the Japan tsunami in 2011 caused significant damage to California's harbors. The last big one that impacted California was uh, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami which came from Japan to California and caused about a hundred million dollars in damage just to coastal infrastructure, boats, harbors, um, and piers, that kind of thing. We caught up with Cal OES Earthquake and Tsunami Program Manager Kevin Miller to find out just what areas along California's coastline are prone to this natural disaster and what we should know to be better prepared. It might be coming from Alaska toward California and you're a south facing, facing beach and you think you're protected from something coming from the north and you're not. And then you might have a wave that's coming from Chile and that'll impact different uh, uh, harbors or, or coastlines than something coming from Japan. So it just depends on how much water is coming and what direction it's coming from and what your local topography is really what's controlling uh, how much inundation does or doesn't occur. So what are the warning signs in the event of an impending tsunami? If you feel strong or long, uh, shaking, uh, earthquake type shaking, and you're at the beach, um, that would be one indicator. Another would be is if you hear a large abnormal ocean roar that you don't expect from the ocean. And a third indicator is uh, a drawdown abnormally uh, of the water drawing far out. Um, something to remember, that those are um, uh, natural warnings. Don't look for all three of them to happen. Just one of them might be an indicator of a tsunami. If it's a distant event, that's when you'll have potentially hours of warning and you can get information potentially on your phone or on the radio. Um, if there are tsunamis, I mean, uh, if there are sirens in your area, um, those could be triggered as well. And if you encounter one or more of these warnings, what should you do next? Pretty easy to protect yourselves from by knowing where your hazard zone is, which you can find online. Um, there are tsunami warning signs along the coast that show how far inland these things are expected to go. In most cases in California you should be okay above 20 to 50 feet. Uh, in far northern California it may be a little bit higher north of Cape Mendocino. Thankfully we do not see tsunamis often on the west coast. But as you can see, when they do happen, they have the capability of being destructive and in some cases deadly. If you have a subduction zone right off coast, you may only have 10 or 15 minutes to get to that high ground. So practicing um, your, your route to safety um, with your community, with your family, by yourself, and knowing what that route would be on a sunny day like today is a good thing to have in, in place. In the event you have to evacuate due to a tsunami, make sure you follow the evacuation routes away from the ocean. You don't have to go that far to get to a safe place. In fact, if you look behind me, you can see the ocean right down the way. Back to you, Brian. All right, thanks, Rob. Now back to our initial question. What is the one thing you really shouldn't do if a tsunami were headed toward the coast of California? Born and raised in Ventura County, John Higgins knows these waters like the back of his hand. Hi, guys. Okay, I just want to remind you, there's larger than average surf, so when you come out, when you come in the harbor, really try to stay in the middle. In his 23 years with the Ventura Harbor District, the last five as harbor master, Higgins has pretty much seen it all. The first time that we experienced the tsunami, 
I would say we did not see the drastic drop of the sea level like you've heard of in, in some of the Pacific Islands or in Asia when they've had those uh, tsunamis where the water retreats back and it's nothing but barren uh, bottom of the ocean. In our harbor, there, there was very little warning, if anything, it was coming. But fortunately, it wasn't a big wave that came. It was just an influx of water, a consistent surge of water akin to a river coming in the harbor continuously for a period of time and then leaving the harbor continuously for a period of time. Back-to-back -back tsunamis in 2010 and 2011 turned out to be teachable moments for Higgins and Ventura Harbor. The tsunami didn't happen in five minutes and it was done. The tsunami happened over a period of time. We had several different events. And in the Japan case, it lasted for, for over 12 hours, these individual events. So patience was key. Which leads us to the one thing John Higgins recommends you not do if a tsunami were heading towards California. So I would highly recommend if you're not at the harbor, don't come to the harbor. I had people in, in each of those instances saying, I'm in Los Angeles or I'm in Bakersfield. Should I come to the harbor and take my boat and go out in the ocean? I said, no, no, no. When the next tsunami warning comes in, and it will, Higgins knows from experience the protocol he is to follow. I typically will get the call from our Ventura County Office of Emergency Services who is tied in with Cal OES and the Tsunami Warning Center. He also knows from experience the simple measures those in the tsunami zone should follow. It is as simple as five minutes into town, everybody knows that there's Starbucks, there's grocery stores, there's hospitals, there's movie theaters, there's parks, there's a number of different things that can stimulate you and keep you entertained for a period of time. Um, and that's on top of being assured your safety. When they go into the ocean, there is none of that. They are, they are going into what is akin to the old Wild West. There is no resources out there. There's no gas station, there's no Starbucks, there's no movie theater, there isn't a uh, hospital offshore, there isn't an ambulance. If you'd like more information on what to do in the event of a tsunami, you can go to tsunamizone.org. And while you're there, there's a list of events that are taking place all across California for our Tsunami Awareness Week. Again, that's the last week of March. For all of us at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, I'm Brian May. Thanks for watching. Go to tsunamizone.org to learn more. Find out if your home, school, or workplace are in a tsunami hazard or evacuation zone. Understand the difference between a tsunami watch, advisory, or warning and what you should do before, during, and after a tsunami strikes.